Did you have a good sleep? Not if you're allowed inside, okay, buggy? Good boy! Lucky boy, him! Thank you so much! Alright, we've got the goods. Daily provision. Alright, we're good. What have we got? Look at that, him. Whoa. What is that? What is that? It's a bacon, egg, and cheese on a maple crawler. And then it's I've got so the proper good. bacon, egg, so and cheese. Like Look at that. Bacon. All right, so we're here at the office. Just talked to the guys who were test flighting my app. They found a couple of extra bugs, so <laughs> life of the developer. Just some things around like when you're coming back into the app after it being stale for like a few hours, like you need to like force a refresh and like all state and ensure the user's actually still allowed to be logged in. And then also there's some things for like the welcome flow, like actually onboarding into the app where users are getting stuck when they choose their first name or username. So yeah, otherwise we're just gonna smash out a couple of bugs and yeah, get it fixed. test flight process is, okay, what's really cool is Expo, the thing that attaches onto React Native. It's really cool, because you've got this Expo application services service that you can use. It's a little bit expensive, but it allows you to just like CLI build iOS apps straight to the cloud. And then from there, they can handle like submitting to the App Store Connect and like your developer account and signing all the credentials and doing all that really cool stuff. But I accidentally just ripped through my free tier, which is like 15 iOS builds, medium builds within a month. And now I'm paying $2 US a build to get things out there. So now I'm stashing a ton of commits and like bug fixes. Overall, the service is great. So definitely highly recommend using it. It's just frustrating when you think you've solved all the bugs you pay an extra two dollars, you get this build up, you get it deployed into App Store Connect, which then I can send out on test flight, and then there's more bugs. But I mean, if you don't like bugs, don't be a developer, so. All right, so we've had a pretty productive morning. Um, been podcasting, listening to Beer Heza. Dude's super inspirational. Got some bugs fixed on my app. That's great. I'm now in test flight. I've got people testing my app, mainly just like coworkers and friends and such. But I do want to invite some of you guys on the channel, especially anyone that lives in New York City, to comment down below your zip code. I might just reply to you. Maybe we get in touch on Instagram or something. I want to give you access to the test flight so you can actually check it out. I want to show you guys finds. And essentially, in a nutshell, it's a way for you to share your favorite foods and cocktails within New York City in one place and it's very image focused and kind of almost like emotion and feeling focused as well. 
This is what it looks like. The main feed, everyone you follow, and also there's a tab for like everyone else in New York City. You just infinitely scroll. Right now, I've only got a couple of like images on here and finds, which is what the posts are called. Uh, Cause obviously I'm just in test flight and beta. But essentially you come in, you find and search your like restaurant that you're eating at and you add a review. But instead of using like a number system, like a 9.2 out of 10, which in the end gets kind of irrelevant because how do I know if your 9.2 is even a 9.2 in my head or whatever it is. It's more just based on how the food looks, how it tastes, the photos, like the content really. If your friends were to share a restaurant with you and say, hey, you should go to this place because this is just like incredible or whatever. We search for whatever restaurant that we're going to. So right now, let me do a quick search. I'm gonna go cafe just to make things really, really easy. We're gonna get a whole lot of results and just keep in mind for the beta testers, it is in the New York City, so nothing outside there is gonna pop up. We're gonna choose one. There we go, we'll choose one. And you can see, yep, there aren't any reviews yet, so let's go ahead. We're gonna create a find. We're gonna upload some images, which is just an S3 bucket with some compression. Um, and then you're gonna choose a category. And you can see the categories that are a little bit different to what you might expect on like a food finds app. They're a little bit out there, and this is a little bit different to what you like might expect in a food like find sharing kind of app, because most of the time it's what number out of five is the food scored at, or what number out of 10 is the food scored at. But because that's in my head anyway, not that relevant to me, I kind of wanted to bucket it into like emotions. So you can see that there's a ton of different emotions or like categories you could say that you can choose from. And these are obviously subject to change based on kind of like feedback we get and I don't know, whatever people wanna do. Maybe in the future people can add like custom categories instead. Um, but the idea is you just choose a category, you write a review, you add some tags for like searchability and then you publish the find. And then yeah, that's kind of the idea. Then it shares with your friends, your friends can see the stuff that you're sharing, you can go in, you can read their entire review. That's Alex's one, so it doesn't have much text, but you can see my one has a lot of text about the ramen that Maddie and I ordered. So yeah, that's kind of the vibe. Uh, you can save places on the app for later as well. Click this little button right here and you can save it. You can unsave it and then you've got a saves tab. So you can actually see all the places that you've saved for later and you can go visit them. Maybe leave your find as well. Super, super simple app, but obviously takes a ton of code on the front end and the back end to get going. I'm now in test flight stage. It's been like a month and a half, maybe two months build. It's been a lot of fun. So I wanna invite some of you guys, especially if you live in New York City, to jump into the test flight. So yeah, I could go on forever, but I'm really just trying to get like the MVP out. Otherwise, I could just be a dev and just keep adding features forever without getting market validation. So yeah, if you do wanna jump in and you wanna try it out and you live in New York City, I'd love you to jump in and check it out. Just comment down below if you're in New York City, maybe just comment your zip code and I'll reply to you. And also like, do you guys love buying domains? Domain buying is like one of the funnest things ever. I have absolutely no idea why. It's almost just like, it's the start of a creative project and making that purchase. I know purchasing is like a dopamine hit in itself, but like there's something about GoDaddy being like, yeah, you own this domain now, boy. So, I don't know, that's cool. Anyway, that's the app, that's what I've been building. Now, we need to get some users, get some test people on, and then I guess I'm gonna have to go around New York City. Final fun thing for me, Maddie's still in my office, so I'm working out here. I have been working out here. I just solved the coolest bug. Okay, so think about if you're uploading multiple images at once. And I'm just using like standard S3 bucket and I just send multiple images up to the server and they return with like a public URL that I can then like give to the user on the front end. Now for like added user experience, I, before the image even like goes up to S3, I save it in state, all images, like whether you've selected one or four or five, and I display them in like a loading indicator. Now I had this issue where sometimes I would select like two or three images and then all of a sudden there'd be like duplicates of one of the images, like instead of three different images, there'd be three of the same. And I was like, I was like, what the heck's going on? So I was looking through the code for like half an hour, even ended up just like putting it into chat GPT and going, what the heck's going on? So it turns out 
every time that I was selecting an image, I was assigning like a random path name to the image. And I happened to be using like date.now plus JPEG. And as you can imagine, sometimes my uploads were like super fast, especially on localhost, where the name would be within the same millisecond. So for the time, the date.now would be within the same millisecond. So then, as you can imagine, the file name would be overwritten and there'd be duplicates. So, yep, fix that. And what's great is, as you can see, boom, super easy with Expo EAS services to just push a new build, 1.02. I've actually done two updates today. And, uh, oh, we got a new inquiry. That's the next, next thing as well. I actually just launched the beta waitlist for anyone that wants to try out the app who lives in New York City. So uh, yeah, I'll put the link to that down below if you wanna jump in there. Uh, yeah, but it's been otherwise a fun day. And otherwise, I actually can't think of any bugs right now that are preventing me from like sending this into production. Obviously there's gonna be way more features to add and there's probably gonna be way more bugs, but Good news is, solved a couple of those major bugs today and pushed them up, so we're doing good. Hope you guys enjoy this episode of just a day in the life. Um, I am going to clock off now. It's been a big day of code and like planning YouTube stuff and getting excited. And I'll see you guys soon. Join the waitlist. see you later.